Welcome to the DSP project. My name is Rupert Brown, and in this episode, we will be looking at the ProQ EQ plugin by FabFilter from, the Am from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. In the last episode, we looked at another software EQ, the UAD Massive Passive, but this had a very different goal of imparting the character and color of its hardware counterpart. In contrast, ProQ is designed to be a transparent software EQ. Let's take a closer look. Starting from the top here, we've got undo and redo buttons. We've got A, B, so we can compare two different EQ curves to see which one we like the most. If we hit the copy button here, it will copy the current EQ curve into the other slot. So you can see A, B are both the same now. We've got presets, pretty standard bunch of presets. Help button here, we've got contextual help and uh, help topics and stuff as well. Now uh, let's have a look at the settings for each band. So we can select whether we're editing the, the left channel, the right channel, or stereo, both the left and right channels. And if in mid-side mode, these controls then select uh, mid and side respectively. You can see we've got a little pair of scissors under here. We can actually split the current EQ point. And so now we've got a, uh, a separate EQ point for both the left and right channels. We've got our uh, uh, different EQ shapes. So we've got the bell, good old fashioned bell you'll all be quite familiar with. A low shelf, so you might just want to put a little boost or a little dip on the low end. A low cut, which is essentially a high pass filter. I understand why they haven't called it a high pass filter as it's not that intuitive for maybe newer people coming into audio because it's called a high pass filter. Um, it's actually filtering out the low end, but it's got the word high in, in it. High shelf, obviously same sort of thing as the, the, the low shelf. High cut, which uh, again is essentially a low pass filter. For our cut filters, we've also, we can select the, the sharpness of them so we can put a, a nice smooth 6 dB per octave uh, cut on there or a really sharp 48 dB per octave cut. A notch, um, which we can use for, for just for if we want to completely um, completely cut out a, uh, a slice of the frequency spectrum. We've got the, the frequency, which is obviously the, the frequency you're cutting or boosting. Um, the gain control here, whether we want to add or subtract from that particular frequency. Q here, which uh, controls whether we want to make a, a nice smooth broad EQ or whether we want some sort of a, a, a sharp surgical uh, surgical EQ, we can change use the Q setting. Moving over, we've got the bypass button here, which will bypass just that individual EQ points. So uh, all the others are active, we're just turning that one on and off. Uh, then we've got a delete button here, which will basically kill that, that particular EQ point. And then we've got these little left right arrows, we can actually cycle through the different EQ points. Down to the bottom here, we've got a MIDI limb function and now processing. We've got a couple of different options. So we've got zero latency, which works as a uh, sort of a standard EQ or an analog EQ, where by, by the sort of the nature of the design, it creates a small phase discrepancy at the specific frequency that you're EQing. Now I want to stress that this isn't always a bad thing. It's actually part of, can be part of the reasons why some people like certain characteristics of certain EQs is because of the, the, the slight uh, phasing uh, that, that happens. However, if you're working to be for bringing on two separate channels maybe that you're bringing together like in a, a parallel situation where you might be EQing um, let's say a, like sort of a compressed copy and, and putting EQ on that and then mixing that back in with an original clean copy, then those phase discrepancies can then can sometimes cause a little bit of trouble. So we've got a linear phase mode. So you might be wondering what's the difference between the, the, uh, the different linear phase modes. Well, it's basically a trade-off between the amount of latency that you get versus the accuracy, particularly in the, the low end. So if you're working in the, if you're EQing just in the high end, then sort of uh, low to medium is probably going to be okay. But then if you're doing sort of uh, very precise cuts in the, the low end, then you probably want to be looking at uh, more of a, a higher latency mode. Some of the original linear phase EQs that I tried had, they sounded a bit weird. Um, uh, there was sort of this a weird kind of effect, but uh, I haven't noticed that in the using Pro-Q. That's a very flexible option to have both a linear phase and a zero latency EQ in the, in the same box and, it, and they both sound very good. Moving over, we've got channel mode, so we've got left and right, or as I said before, we can select mid and side, so we can sort of edit just what's happening on the, in, the, in the stereo field or in the, in the center channel, so to speak. And then we've got the analyzer, so the analyzer can show us off pre-EQ, post-EQ, and 
pre and post. So we can see here, in the, if we're looking at the analyzer at the background, there's this kind of shadow, and we can see where it's being, where the original one is, and where our boosts here are, are affecting the channel. Bypass, which bypasses the um, entire EQ completely. We've got an output here so we can boost the, the level, level overall level coming the output gain of the plugin and also there's a pan ring on the outside here as well. Okay looking at the window here where all the action goes on. First of all we can set the scale so we can come in nice and tight at 3 dB or we can zoom way out at 30 dB which is nice. Set this back at 12 dB. Another nice feature is if I create a, uh, a new EQ point and I push up against the ceiling here, you can see that it automatically scales out to 30 dB if I wanted to put some sort of a ridiculous boost in there. Another nice part of the interface is you see we've got this little headphone icon here. I can actually solo out, we'll sh I'll show you this later with some audio, but I can solo out the, um, the, the particular band that I'm, that I'm working on. So if I, if I put a sharper, sharper EQ on there, you'll see that the, the solo points get thinner. And so we can hear exactly, lock on to exactly what we're EQing. Really nice feature there. Um, another nice point is for creating a new EQ point, all you need to do is click click and drag and so I've just clicked it created a new bell I can now I can now change the the gain up and down the frequency left and right and I can even change the Q value with my with the scroll wheel on my mouse which is really nice so I can scroll this down if I wanted a, a nice sharp notch and if I want to start taking a few a few nasty frequencies out mouse wheel oh by the way mouse wheel nice sharp notch and then I can go through and, and sort of get the exact frequency that I want to work on. Also, if we, put, if we select a, start a, create a new point on the, the left here, we create a low shelf, uh, and if we select from the side here, we get a, a high shelf as well. We've got shortcuts as well, so I can push Command-Alt and select the EQ point. It changes the, the style of EQ, whether it's a, a shelf or a notch, etc. With up to 24 bands, Pro-Q lets you make just about any kind of EQ curve you could ever want. I find it provides nice tight notches perfect for surgical subtractive EQ work, and with linear phase and mid-side support, it has become my go-to transparent software EQ for mastering. It can be purchased directly from fabfilter.com and costs 149 euros. I think this is a good price for the flexible, high-quality interface and sound it provides. In conclusion, I really like Pro-Q by FabFilter. It's a total winner and would be a great compliment to anybody's audio toolbox. If you have any questions or comments about this EQ or any equivalent products, please let me know in the comments below. Finally, the affiliate stuff, loopmasters.com for all your sample pack needs and pluginboutique.com for your online plugin Megamart. When shopping at either of these two fine establishments, you can use the code DSP10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. Um, and uh, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.